Hello and welcome back to the Boat Shed. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at some of the more extensive projects coming up for this giant refit, so let's get right into it. Hi, I'm John and this is Antidote. Join the adventure as I leave my nine to five desk job behind to transform this tired old liveaboard back into a capable world cruiser. I was stuck in the endless loop of trading my time for money, like a life for sale. Now I'm focusing all of my energy into fixing up this old boat, and now I'm living for sale. Hold on. A number of you have been asking for a video like this in the comments, and I think it's a great idea. This is going to give you a preview of what's to come on the channel, and then stick around to the end of the video where we'll get a glimpse of some of the work already in progress. Now as a quick disclaimer, this is not a channel about an abandoned boat or a boat that I bought for a dollar that was barely floating. This is a proper seagoing boat, but it does need a lot of work. And if you've seen the previous tour, you probably already figured out this isn't a derelict vessel. Now I can tell there's a lot of experts hanging out there in the comments watching these videos, and I think that is great. I am by no means a professional boat builder, don't claim to be, but I am an enthusiastic learner and a do-it-yourselfer, and I have a pretty decent quiver of skills. I think we're gonna be just fine, and I'm really excited to have you guys along for the ride. I'll have some questions for the group as we work on this project, so if you have anything you wanna put in the comments below, you have any ideas, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. All right, so let's start inside and take a look at the ice box here. This is all gonna come up and we're gonna re-insulate this, rebuild the ice box and use a new, a new compressor system. The original one is an old cast iron compressor. It's massive. I have a link to the old video. I'll throw it right up here so you can see what's going on with that. It's quite a mess. But what I'd like to do is, is to rebuild all of this, probably new countertops and we'll preserve the top and forward loading for the refrigerator. The freezer will be on the farther to the starboard side. We're gonna beef up the insulation a lot, so we're gonna lose some volume, unfortunately. Okay, let's take a look at the fuel tanks in the antidote. Th these are gonna need a little bit of work. They're original black iron tanks. These tend to be a problem on these boats. There's two of them, 180 gallons total. So there's the one right here, then there's one on this side over here that goes to the starboard side. And they're actually welded right down the center, you can see here. So it's basically one giant tank, and they're huge, and the only way to get them out of this boat is in several small pieces out the companionway. I'd really like to be able to preserve these. Some people that are refurbished have gone with smaller plastic tanks. You kind of have to put them together in a composite way. And I don't know, I'm not really super keen on it. I'll take a little peek inside here. So the inside of the tank is in, I would call it decent condition. <laughs> um, when, when I had them open a year ago and did some, some fuel polishing, I was surprised there was a ton of rust scale that came out of these, but I'm hoping that I can clean them. There's no leaks that I've detected yet. So I'm hoping to be able to give them another lease on life. So Antidote has four original stainless steel water tanks on board. We carry 240 gallons of water. It's a lot of water. And then just forward here, you'll see a, there's an older power survivor electric water maker. So I'm not sure if I need 240 gallons of water and a water maker. I definitely want to have a water maker. Maybe that one's going to uh, rebuild and be just fine. Maybe I need to invest in something different. If I have an opportunity to, to convert a tank for something other than water that I think is going to make sense for the vessel, then I'll probably do that. But this is what we've got right now. So. The Antidote still has the original Lima 90 on board. These are great old motors, slow running, diesel, naturally aspirated, no turbos, no electronics, no microchips, just pure mechanical amazingness. And this one actually runs pretty well. They all smoke a little bit at startup. Normal, runs well. I'd love to be able to keep this motor. It's got some hours on it, but hey, that might only be halfway through its life, like me. <laughs> I don't know if this motor is having a midlife crisis or a uh, midlife clarity journey is what my sister likes to call it. But we'll see if we can keep this thing running. If I'm going to be gone for a couple years and I need this thing to be reliable, just, you know, it hasn't let me down. Does it make sense to rebuild it while I have the boat here on the hard and I have the opportunity? It's not really easy to get it out of here, but maybe I can at least do the top end. If you have a lot of experience with the Lima 90 and you think, you know, at 4,700 hours, should be good or maybe I should just do an oil sample test we can get an idea of how the motor is in what kind of condition I'm interested to hear what you guys think so let me know Antidote has her fair share of outdated electronics or she did anyways I've taken a lot of it out as you can see this old SSB is the only thing that's still inside the boat I'm still debating on if I'm going to keep that or let that go let me know if you have an opinion on that um, and then all the original wiring it's really nicely laid out it's it's 
clearly marked and cleverly laid out. It's just all original and I don't believe it's tinned copper. So I'm, I'm concerned about corrosion over time. So we're probably gonna be taking a look at that too. Antidote's original electrical panel. So in great shape, I think it's gonna work just fine. The gauges are all toast. I, well, I don't know if all of them are, but the AC volts and DC volts are both reading nominal 12 and 120 volts and nothing's plugged in. So I'm sure it's not working completely properly, but it opens up, which is nice. You can service the back. All the wiring in the boat is fairly tidy. It's just old and needs to get replaced. So while we're working on this system, we're probably gonna upgrade to 24 volts and we're gonna upgrade the boat to lithium, I'm pretty sure. Maybe at least AGM, but I'd like to go with lithium for the, for just cause you have so much more battery capacity available and they charge so much faster. So stay tuned for that. We're gonna be looking at fully redoing this whole electrical system. That's gonna be a huge job. <laughs> Currently on board this boat, we have one bilge pump. It's 500 gallons per hour, and that's just way too small. <laughs> so we need to upgrade that significantly. I wanna be at around 4,000 gallons per hour for this boat, adjusted for all of your losses. So that's your, your hose length, the voltage drop, and the head height that you have to pump the water up and over. So we are gonna significantly improve the system on this boat to get rid of any extra water on board that we do not want inside the hull. And we're gonna to try to also relocate the exit location. Right now it's coming out of the side of the boat and there is very little room to get a vented loop with any amount of rise to prevent water from coming back in the boat when, there's, when it's healed over. So we're gonna try to relocate some larger lines into the engine room that will pump out the stern of the boat through the center line so it'll be less affected by heel. Welcome to the aft cabin on Antidote. What I wanna show you back here is actually the autopilot system. So the current system, the autopilot runs on an electromechanical linear actuator that's driven to the quadrant. And then the other hard point is on a half inch plywood bulkhead that goes athwartships and it's slightly beefed up with a three quarter inch piece of plywood. Now, I don't really know if I like all those steering loads, all those forces going through that little bulkhead. Doesn't sound good to me. So I would like to instead try and incorporate a system that relies on mounting to this stainless steel hard point which is mounted across the boat tabbed into the boat much stronger i think it's going to work really well antidote does not have any cover or dodger it had a canvas front and a little semi hard top dodger when we bought it and i'd like to to build a proper hard enclosure i want it to not be fiberglass to the hull i want to have nice glass i don't want it to be heavy either so it's going to be expensive <laughs> and hard to make but hey if you if you know any engineers in your life then you've probably already figured out there's got to be a harder way we're gonna find out so these are all original lumar 70 hatches there's four on the boat one two three four um, and they are probably gonna all get replaced there's quite a bit of crazing going on here the hinges are kind of getting old and tired I mean, they still work, but uh, this is the window to my house. Let's get these refreshed. With these old handrails, I am considering pulling these out. At, very, at the very least, we'll totally refinish these. Um, I do love the teak, but you know, teak is such a difficult wood to maintain. And this is a traveling boat, it's not a show boat. So I'm considering refabricating these out of stainless. I'll try to use the exact same footprints and the same curve, nice big stainless tubing around the ends over so nothing hooks up. And I think that'll be a little bit more utilitarian, but uh, it's also gonna be super functional. So I don't know, let me know what you think about that idea to fabricate new stainless steel uh, handholds for the cabin top. Antidote still has all of her original Seacox and through hole fittings. These are 34 year old bronze fittings so far they look like they're doing okay, but 25 years is sort of the rule of thumb on when you should replace these. So these have all got to go. Antidote has a number of these style of through hole fittings with the grate over them, but not detachable. It's all one piece cast. I do not like these. They tend to fill up with barnacles. This one currently still is. So we're gonna replace these with just traditional through hole fittings. Maybe we'll put a, a cover, a removable cover over them. I'm not sure yet. I don't know, what do you think about that? I am considering some fairly significant surgery here on the bow of Antidote, and that would be to install a tunnel thruster in this vicinity. 
And the reason for that being that there's gonna be a lot of shorthanded sailing on the boat. And it's just so nice to have that extra confidence that a bow thruster would provide in just allowing uh, you to easily maneuver the boat side to side. So it's pretty major surgery, cutting a huge hole in the boat. Uh, what do you think about that? Is that something you do in your driveway? One of the very first things we have to do here on Antidote is put this old teak deck out of its misery. So uh, this boat was built in 1989 and this deck is tired and it's probably 10, 15 years too long on here. So you can see we've got a lot of the joints have long since failed. The caulking is just coming right off. We've got bungs that have long since disappeared, screw heads exposed. If you could get down here, you'd see it's a bit wavy. So this is all going to come off. We're expecting to find a little bit of water damage underneath. We'll approach that as we get to it. So yes, I know this does spoil the surprise a little bit. The teak decks on Antidote are already gone. They were just too far to recover. After 34 years of leaking, they have not only destroyed themselves, but also allowed the core inside the deck to become fairly damaged as well. This is a deck fill here, and you can see I'm just just loosening up all the old core. Fortunately, the teak decks were toast and it looks like most of the deck is also gonna need a lot of core work. Hope you're enjoying this little sneak peek of the teak deck removal. If you are, why not take a second and hit that like button for me? It really helps me out and it helps me to understand that you're liking these videos. Thanks. Now, while we're already on the topic of the coring and the deck, I am curious to know what you guys think about these. This is one of the old deck prisms. You know, I'm considering reusing these. Once you get rid of the teak, I'll have to reconfigure the construction so I can get the glass low enough so it's flush on deck, but do you have any thoughts on that? So this hatch is Antidote's propane locker. Now I've got the screws already taken out so we can just get that right out of the way. This holds two aluminum propane tanks. I'm considering getting rid of propane on the boat. I'm interested in going to electric. I see some people doing that. I could fit about 20 gallons of fuel in here and a custom bladder. Or I could just have another lazarette. With the center cockpit boats, that's one thing that you kind of miss is having a lot of storage in and around the cockpit. So it might be nice to have an extra 20 gallons of storage, put the door back on, get a proper latch on it. Antidote has all the original chain plates still in place. These are what you call encapsulated plates, meaning that the plate goes in between the deck skin and the hull laminate on the outside. And this is actually laid up to the inside of the hull laminate with some cross members that are welded together and then glassed in place. So the only thing holding this in is the fiberglass construction. And that's, that's fine for a time, but the stainless will eventually succumb to crevice corrosion. And the only way to know for sure, to be really sure is to take them out and inspect them. You know, there's x-rays, things like that, but it's the cost of doing that is probably more than just replacing them will be. So uh, we're just gonna assume that, you know, after 34 years, this piece of stainless has done its job and it's time to go and do something new. So we're gonna to have to figure out new chain plates. While I was pulling the cap rail off to take a look at all of this, the hull to deck joint became an obvious source of concern for me because you can see a very visible crack here. Usually what you'd have is the hull laminate coming up and folding over the top and the deck laminate joining it there. So there'd be a, a, a overlap where there could be some glue or some adhesive and then it, it would all be screwed together and that would provide you a very leak proof joint. Now this is obviously opened up, so water has definitely gotten inside. Where is it going? I don't know. Probably need to cut open a section of this just to get an idea of what the construction is like in here and what kind of damage there is inside and if we need to really investigate further. So disappointing to see this hull to deck joint. I was very surprised by that, but we're gonna soldier on. Now I took the cap rail off because it was interfering with some other parts and I knew I wanted to take a look at that and hold a deck joint, which I'm really not happy about. You know, here's a section of the cap rail and, and we'll, we'll show a video of us taking this apart. I believe it was put down with 5200, so please don't do that to people. Come on, that's not nice. Don't use 5200. The teak's in, ah, boy, fair condition. I mean, it had some cracks. This is actually, the piece isn't too bad. Might be able to reuse this. I don't know. I'm on the fence about being able to reuse some of it. Some of it is just too far gone, like this piece broke. Here's a piece that, that was just dry and it had already split down the middle. You know, it's really too bad because I love teak. I love natural wood. But teak is a lot of work. So, you know, we're going we're gonna to think about it, what to do about the cap rail. But as of right now, it's all off. Hope you're enjoying this quick sneak peek of the teak deck removal. <laughs> Watch your head. 
you know, the boat is, I should be, I should know this by now, 24 years old, I think it is. Right? Does that make sense? No, 34 years old. Let's start again. So this hatch right here is Antidote's propane locker. And the, the wiring is pretty spiffy in the boat. Oh, did I say spiffy? I don't think I can say that. Hi. <laughs> so these are all the original hatches. Oh, my knee. <laughs> so there you go. There's a little preview for you of some of the work we're going to be doing on Antidote. And there's lots more. There's going to be all kinds of little jobs like rebuilding the cockpit winches. I have a little fun thing I'm going to add into that. We're going to rebuild the Nilsen windlass at the bow of the boat. We're going to rebuild the Pro Furl furlers. The whole idea here is to like take what was old and bring it back to life, give it new life again and take it for another spin around the globe. If you've enjoyed this video and you're just finding us for the first time, I'd love it if you checked out this playlist. It'll get you caught up all up to speed with us. And if you want to subscribe, you can do that over there. And I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. Cheers.